Hello everybody, the MI Vlogger here, and today I want to share with you this um, ancestry DNA analysis that I did um, from uh, 23andMe.com, and I'm really excited that I got the results back. Um, I did this quite a while ago, about um, a year and a half ago maybe, and I just wanted to share with you um, my ancestry. and. I just thought that it was kind of cool that I would get to find out hundreds and hundreds of years of ancestry and what I'm made of, even though I think I have a pretty good clue. Okay, so the majority of my DNA is mainly made up of Middle Eastern and North African, but if you click here, you could see that um 94.5% of it is ninety is um Middle Eastern, and if you look here, Middle Eastern is um countries such as uh, our Turkey, Iran, the Caucasus, the Levant, um, North African. It's a very small amount, zero point six percent. So this is probably a very long time ago since it's such a small percentage. And then, yeah, this is very very small. Uh, also, I'm 4.5% European, and this is actually what kind of surprised me over here. I'm 1.6% Italian, 4% uh, Southern European, so Italian um, groups from the Northern European and Eastern Mediterranean, that's part of Italy. Um, Southern Europe, I'm from Iberian, Italian, and Balkan peninsula, so as I was saying, the region from the Mediterranean. Um, again, this is very small, but I'm um, Ashkenazi Jewish. So, a thousand years ago. So, this one of my ancestors from a thousand, or about a thousand, probably, well, actually, you know, probably from like a couple hundred years ago, was an Ashkenazi Jew. And then 0.4% probably European. Um, yeah. And then the smallest amount is Sub Saharan African. Um, so less than 0.1% of West African, less than 0.1% of probably Sub Saharan African. Um, that's kind of cool, I guess. Um, well, it kind of makes sense since um, all humans descended from Africa at one point in life. Um, also, if you go down here, you can also see a, um, where on your chromosomes they discovered this. So, um, let me zoom out a little bit. Um, so, you can see like all the colors coordinate with um, uh, the, chromos the, the chromosomes and our DNA that um, they use to identify which region or ancestry you have. So look, Middle Eastern, North African, that little tiny bit around down there. Uh, you've got European, there's where they found the European. Southern European, Italian, right there. Uh, I can not see Jew, those little tiny pieces right there. Uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, tiny little piece, and yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so that's really interesting. I highly suggest um, you do this if you really want to learn ancestry composition because this really um, helped me learn a lot about my ancestry and help me discover a lot of things that I didn't know. So it's really interesting. I think everybody should do this if you have the chance. Or give this to somebody that you know that would be interested in it. Um, they also do a lot of other things. And let me just point out that um, when I did this a year ago, um, this whole package is only like $99, but now they've like doubled the price. Now it's $200 for all of this and $99 only for the Ancestry. So just keep that in mind. Oh, and also let me show you. Within the Ancestry... Um, oh, that also, that 
also wants to see your maternal or maternal haplogroups, which is basically the the origin haplogroup is a family of maternal paternal lineages that descend from a common ancestor. So the global distribution of them sheds light on the origin of some of our ancient ancestors and, and on their migrations over tens of thousands of years. So my maternal haplogroup is U3. Region is like, you know, Caucasus, Near East, Balkans, just like the, um, like where the Middle Eastern and European, um, <clears throat> um, regions were in my ancestry composition. And then got the paternal, um, EMI23, Near East, Northeast Africa, and Southern Europe, like, like that. See the Q3 migration, or look this region. If you click paternal, um, you've got U3 over here. So this is where I need so it's so I got most. Um, what are the? Oh, this is the same. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it's about. A little bit more European on the maternal side. A little more Middle Eastern, North African on my paternal side, I guess. <laughs> um, let me go back and show the Neanderthal <laughs> ancestry. This is kind of cool. It's the first I've ever um, known that you can test for this. Neanderthal ancestry, they were ancient humans, but different than modern humans before becoming extinct 40,000 years ago. So this report helps to tell um, how much of your ancestry can be traced back to the Neanderthals. So I have 213 Neanderthal variants. Um, but I have fewer variants than 95% of the customers. So I'm not that big of a Neanderthal. <laughs> um, yeah, this just gives you more information. Oh, sorry. Um, so, like, a variant that Neanderthals had that I have is having straight hair. And I do have straight hair in real life, so. Um, most likely this thing is after eating dark chocolate. I don't eat dark chocolate, and I don't have the variant, so no. Less back hair. Um, I don't really have back hair, so... I don't know about that one. And height. Um, I guess they were a particular height, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, and if you have like other family members that you can add, <laughs> you can kind of see who has, who's the biggest Neanderthal of all of you all. So it's kind of funny. Uh, so let's move on. Let's go to carrier status. This one's pretty basic. Basically, it's just a bunch of um, genetic diseases that they test you to test your DNA for, and um, if you have it, it'll say variant detected. But um, pretty much all of these diseases, I mean, yeah, genetic diseases, I do not have the variant for, and I'm thankful for that. Um, but this is really helpful um, because some of these diseases could be um, asymptomatic, and so knowing that you have the very knowing that the, knowing that you have the variant could either mean that you could be a carrier for this disease, or you may actually have the disease and just not know it yet. So that's very useful um, if you know that um, a particular um, that um, your you your family could have a chance of. Um, um, you could have a chance, based on your family history, of carrying a particular um, autoimmune, I mean, <laughs> genetic disease. Sorry about that autoimmune part. Uh, I just had an immunology lecture today. <laughs> um, so anyways, um, there's also trait reports. These are actually really cool. They, let me just show you. So for example, um, I click taste and smell taste 
compounds is you're likely to taste certain bitter compounds. So, um, and I can taste a bitter compound. I think, I don't know if this has to do with that, um, like cilantro theory where it tastes disgusting or bitter to you. I hate cilantro so much. So this could be the reason why, but at the same time, I'm not sure. So it kind of gives you a little background of the genet, um, the biology, what gene they test for this, the history, um, food preferences. Um, so yeah. Um, um, since you're likely to prefer salty over savory, and that's 100% true, I love salty snacks. Anything that's salty, I'll eat it. I love putting salt on any all, all of my food. Okay, well, let's go back. Got, um... Facial features, hair, physical characteristics, physical responses, skin. Let's go to physical characteristics just to show you something different. Um, let's go to body hair. I to have little or no upper back hair. Little upper back hair. Um, well, I do don't have that much back hair. Like maybe one or two that pop up. Just strangely, so I guess yeah, I don't really have that much, and they do, and they are on my like almost upper back shoulder. That's where they appear again. Biology, evolution, other factors that may be associated with this heat. Mice remaining hair. Um, digit ratios, um, your eyes, so just click on this because this is kind of strange. Let's see what this is about. <clears throat> Says you are likely to have wet earwax. Um, and it's true, I do get wet earwax. And it actually kind of makes it easier to clean, so that's a good thing. Um, so I think one last, let's go back. Um, so you kind of get the idea. And last but not least, you have wellness. This one's actually really cool. This actually um, helped me to know that I was actually lactose intolerant. Yeah, so you've got um, wellness reports like lactose intolerance, which I actually didn't even know I was lactose intolerant until I, until it told me that I was. Let me just show you real quick. Mm, excuse me. So, um, I drew, they tested for this variant. This is actually a very legitimate test. It's like they do this a lot. So like they see there's the other variant ancestry. So 65%. Um, yeah. But I'm not like a very, like a, it's not very aggressive. Like I don't, whenever I eat some Dairy, I have to go to the bathroom right away. It's usually this results in a little indigestion. You know, saturated fat weight, alcohol flush, caffeine consumption, money consumes more, I'm likely to flush. Um, less likely, let me tell you, I, won't, I don't get drunk very quickly. <laughs> Just a good thing. Less likely to, less likely a deep sleeper, um, likely a, spr a sprinter, and sleep movement like would be typical. Of this. So these are kind of like weird things to test for, but at the same time, they're kind of cool to know. Just so you know. Um, you also can, um, if other people in your family do it, you can kind of link them to you and see how you compare and all that stuff. Um, there are forums you can discuss with other people. Um, here you can look at other DNA relatives. So like it'll tell you how much how much DNA you share, one point two percent. So we could be second to third cousins, second to fourth, third to fourth. Yeah, that's kind of cool. And then lastly, you can always um, participate in research that they have. 
Um, he finds ways to answer questions and it helps them conduct whatever research they're doing. So, see, and they also like they have this on the homepage where you kind of see like all your chromosomes and it'll kind of show like, do you want to see this report or not? And blah 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 blah. Yeah, so that's 23andMe. Um, I highly suggest that if you could at least um, that you should at least check out the ancestry. And if, you're, and if um, you're really interested, I would really um, kind of buy the whole package and get all this information if you're interested in additional information because it's really cool to know. And once you have the account, um, the more tests they do, the more they update your um, file and the more um, results that you'll have for different, so different types of tests or reports that come out. So like... Um, when I first did it, there was like only this and like s like seven of these. Now there's like this and this and <laughs> like 30 more of these. So it's really cool to know. Uh, anyways, if, like I said, if you're interested, check it out. I love it. I always, um, I probably check this once or twice, once or twice a month. And if I get an email from them that they conducted something new or they've updated my file in some way, I always go and check it out because I'm always excited to see what they've um, what they've done now, basically. All right, thank you for watching. I hope that you've been inspired and that you really um, go out and do this and find out what makes you you and what um what different um regions um do your is your ancestry made up of. All right.